want a media server, but you're not very smart and you can't set one up, like me, just do what I do. I'll show you. Look, no source there. Type the command not Netflix. Bam. Bam. What do we have there? That's that's Rickle Pick. That's my laptop. It's a good meme. And if I go on to Rickle Pick, I can whoa access. Whoa. Whoa, all my stuff. Let's go see how we do that. Ow. DLNA is what we are going to be using to do this. So DLNA um, is a set of standards formed and set by a bunch of tech companies, basically. So like Intel, Samsung, Pan all the TV and computer -y providers, really. It's to standardize media sharing between platforms. It's quite well supported, even on older devices. So all sorts of smart TVs, um, consoles, like Playstations and computers, of course. Um, so I was using a smart TV. Uh, it's a new one, but even older ones work just fine. Software's been around since like 2004. The software, the standards. Unfortunately, the DLNA, like Digital Network Alliance, Digital Living Network Alliance, they, they've stopped now. They dissolved in 2017, I think. But that doesn't matter. It's still being developed and there's still software supporting those standards that were set. So the software that we're actually using on our computer is called Mini DLNA, which is a little daemon that you run uh, on your computer and you basically point it at a media directory and it will serve it up as DLNA compatible media to any server, any server, any compatible device in your network, in, in your LAN, in your local network. Yeah, you basically point it at a, a media directory uh, and say, please share this media. It can be any media. It doesn't have to be movies or, or TV shows. It can be audio or, or pictures as well. Like maybe just any file. I, I don't know how in depth it goes. So I used to use it quite a lot with, uh, I, I would have a SIFS mount to my NAS that had all, all my legitimate films on. And that was how I used to share all my movies to my TV. But now I just sort of use it on just on my laptop. We're gonna watch, we wanna watch a show or a film and it's not on any streaming service. Put it on my laptop and show off to all my friends because I, I have a super easy way to cast media. It's not an alternative to something like Plex. You might think it is, but Plex actually has DLNA built into it. So if you're running Plex on your LAN, you'll be able to connect to it via its DLNA interface. But you don't really want to put your DLNA device on the internet. It's not really practical or secure. <laughs> um, but Plex can do that, obviously, which is where Plex sort of shines as this standalone thing. I guess this sort of competes with things like Kodi, because I don't think you can share Kodi outside your LAN. So Kodi is <laughs> bloat because it gives you a whole Netflix-like interface, but this just gives you a nice file manager. Well, Kodi's not really about actually, because if you're going to use Kodi, you would you plug in your computer. Never mind. I didn't say anything about Kodi. All right, so let's um, show how you actually configure it. Basically, yeah, make sure that you've installed Mini DLNA. Mini DLNA, like that. It's um, no. <laughs> well, I've installed it. Um, I don't know what the package was called on Fedora, but we shall check. I spelt it wrong. No, I didn't. Are you sure about that? What? Oh, I, I was spelling it wrong. Okay, okay. Right, so I thought I was, but okay, fine. So yeah, the package is just mini DLNA. You install that, you get a little daemon. This daemon is basically configured. You can configure it to start on boot and everything, but I don't do that. Uh, I just run it when I need to. So how I do that is, well, first of all, you want to take a look at the config file. So .config mini DLNA mini dlna.com. The only thing you really want to change is, I guess if something's on 8200, you'd want to change that. Although it's probably not advisable because all your thingamajiggers, all your devices that will connect to it will be listening on that port for this. All right. Um, if you're running this like on boot, you'd want to set this to your user, but this is the important one. Okay, so media dir directory wherever your videos are. I put mine in a separate DLNA directory. That's where they are. Um, and friendly name is what's displayed. So when it said Rickle Pick, 
That's where that came from, basically. DBDIR is important to have accessible and writable to your user. Um, same, same with all these, basically. This stops it taking ages. So when you first start the daemon, take ages to run. It runs through and indexes all your files. Um, so yeah, make sure that's writable. And the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. I've never touched this. Anyway, exit that. And then to start it, because um, I'm a bit insane, I actually use this command here. This basically, you don't need to do this every time. Uh, you can alias it, which is what I did in you saw earlier. You might be able to hear him nodding the little buns. Right, so yeah, what I did earlier was um, alias this, but probably not the best way to do it. Uh, the best way to do it will be to run it on boot, right? But uh, so this basically is to run in the foreground. Um, my alias actually typed it to dad null, but uh, run it in the foreground. You, you'd want to do that so you can sort of see indexing and you can also see what people are looking at if you're that kind of person. Home, go user, uh, the config file basically, and then your know, process ID and then D. Uh, so I had dash D there just for extra debug information basically. You, you don't need that, but I, I do. Yeah. So so you run that and then it would all, yeah, and that's it. It would start, it will start sharing your media. You don't need Plex because you're not going out your house. Use mini DLI. It's basically like a USB stick that you don't have to plug in, right? You, it's very simple to configure. You press one button, bam, people can access your media directory in a nice interface. And you can make it say something funny to get a little laugh, like Rickle Picks, that's funny and original. I didn't even know things like this existed. Hope you found this useful or at least interesting. Um, I, I use this a lot. You might not ever use this, but it's good to know things like this exist. Mark out. Giga cringe. Bye.